I have a good friend from way back, Charlie, um, who is the founder and creator of Philatone. I'm hoping that's correct. Phila, like filament, I'm guessing that's right. So he works a lot with uh, 3D printing guitars and audio equipment and stuff like that. Really cool stuff, go check him out. I'll put some pictures here and a link over there for you to check out. But we figured that it would be cool to do a collaboration. So he printed off some parts and sent them over. So let's have a look at what we got. This is how the packaging came. So the, all the top of it has been ripped off already. So if there's any small bits, they've probably fallen out. So we got, ooh, that's pretty cool. All the small bits are here. Uh, yeah, so Charlie was afraid that stuff would have fallen out. He's gonna need to clarify what all these parts are. That's inlays, isn't it? That's cool. Oh, that's the headstock logo thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, cool beans, cool beans. That is an inlay. Oh, that's sweet, that's cool. I really dig these. So yeah, I'm just gonna put them all nice here because it looks like they're all getting incrementally smaller as they go. Yep, more bits. I think that one piece is broken. This has come off. So that needs to go back in there. Yep, and that's the thing that holds it, holds it together. I'm pretty sure that, that goes in there. And that's the backing like that. And Charlie's definitely gonna need to uh, talk me through all these bits. So those are pickup covers, clearly. There's a huge ass knob, probably a selector of sorts. That's going on the headstock for sure. I'm pretty sure that these are inlays. Oh, it's the wrong way around. Sorry, my bad. It's like so, and we're gonna put these in place. Don't remember this bit. Oh, it goes, yeah, okay. So that's the guess, something like that. And this goes somewhere there. I mean, we'll figure this all out. So on the call with Charlie, I managed to figure out what this is for. It is the control plate and it goes together like so. I've already glued it up uh, it had broken off. And that is the volume knob. So I was gonna sit like that. And then the pickup covers. So they're gonna, the pickups just gonna be held in place there. And then these four screws will do the adjusting. So they'll do the up and down and the pickup will be held in place um, as per usual. Other weird things, I did fix up some bits that were broken off a little bit. Um, so I just, Spock glued stuff with some very thin CA glue to make sure that everything is nice and stable. Uh, that had come off that that bit right there. So I just glued that down. Yeah, so now everything's all well and good. So starting off with creating this build itself, now, this is very much a concept build and a proof of concept at that. So I'm not gonna waste time and try and get the best possible materials that I can find for this project. Instead, I'm just gonna use some things that I had lying around that weren't gonna get used for anything else. Funnily enough, the neck is actually comprised of two old table legs that I found. Um, to be very honest, I actually thought that it was mahogany going into this, but then when I started planing it down, I very quickly realized that, nope, it's actually Spanish cedar. So not only is it kind of an interesting idea to use table legs as neck material, which isn't something new. I used to do this a lot in prototyping days, but Spanish cedar is something I haven't worked with before. So it was definitely a new material for me. Got everything glued up uh, then plane down to an even thickness, got the headstock angle on there, and then routed the truss rod channel, and then cutting off the rough taper for it. Next up is just cutting in the fret slots for the fretboard using an ebony board. This is an old ebony fretboard I had lying around which had a little bit of resin uh, infused into it to kind of 
make it into a full fretboard. Um, it was a little too small to be used for any of production instruments, so I just had it lying around, and this was the perfect uh, opportunity to use it. I drilled a couple of locating pins just to make sure that everything lines up perfectly and doesn't slip while doing all the routing for the actual taper of the neck. So I secured it in place with two pins and then some uh, masking tape and super glue. Oddly enough, the headstock shape was pretty difficult to do. Uh, Charlie designed a pretty cool trapezoidal sort of headstock for this guitar, and I really wanted to kind of keep that instead of designing something that was my own. Uh, but I had to do a little bit of fine adjustment just to get the strings to go exactly where I wanted them to without them rubbing against tuning posts, for example. And then, essentially, on the router table, I just used the ready-made fretboard as a template to route everything. Fairly simple, that's how I usually do things. And gluing up the fretboard with uh, good clamping calls to make sure that everything is nicely in place. Once again, using the uh, pins I created earlier. Then, before moving on to actually creating the body, it was critical that I drew the whole thing to scale. This gave me a much better understanding of exactly what I was going to do, exactly how I was going to approach the build, and already kind of troubleshooting some things coming up. When it came to putting in the inlays, I realized that these are so small that it was going to be extremely difficult for me to actually hold them in place. So I used a little dot of super glue to hold these in place on the fretboard at the correct uh, positions and then use the scalpel blade to kind of score the fretboard so I knew the line to cut to in order to get these inlaid into the fretboard. Use the cut the cut method with a scalpel to get the edges done and then moved on to using a Dremel to actually Dremel out and route out the majority of uh, the cavity. Like so. A little bit of super glue, actually a lot of super glue now that I'm honest. Uh, tapping it in place with a mallet, making sure that it's flush up against the side of the fretboard, and then using a little bit of accelerator to cure it in place. A little bit of super glue on the sides just to fill up any gaps that were left behind. I would want to say tapping in the 12th fret inlay, but that's a lie. I kind of pounded it in and I should have been a little bit more careful because, well, it is 3D printed. It did kind of smush, but overall I couldn't really see any issues with that. Then moving on to the body. So cutting up all the different layers, uh, drew them on using the one-to-one uh, -one drawings that I had created earlier, so I got all the different layers because they're all slightly different shapes. This also allowed me to kind of make sure that I would get the correct shape for each layer and then gluing everything up. Um, one thing you didn't see here is me using the same sort of locating pin method as I did with the fretboard to kind of locate everything. This also just to make sure that everything goes exactly where I want it to, especially because these are all slightly different shapes. The only one that I got to its perfect dimensions was the, I guess, back of the guitar, so the very first layer, and then I used that as a router template to get everything else lined up, and then moved on to using my bobbin sander to fine-tune all the curves. Bobbin sander again, making sure that I get the Headstock thickness correct, as well as a nice volute. And then comes time to make a lot of sawdust. Drilling out all the different cavities, and then routing away all the excess material. Zoom zoom goes the router. So routing the control cavity, and the pickup cavities.
finally the tone pod cavity itself. There we are. Now it's time to start working on the neck. So essentially we're just gonna cut away most of the excess material here just to make sure that we don't have to spend a lot of time trying to do this phase, which is then using the Shinto saw rasp to kind of rasp away forever and ever to get to the right thickness of uh, neck. Now this is the first V-shaped neck that I've ever done. And it was actually a lot of fun because it was a total challenge. Uh, I had to think about it and I had to approach it in a completely different way than I've done before, which was a very nice thing to kind of learn to do a different sort of neck shape to something I'm used to. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll make any more V-shaped necks, but at least now if a customer asks for one, I can at least have some point of reference onto uh, making one in the future. Then comes time for fretting. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit, there's the piece of mahogany and then the call itself, or I don't know what you would call that. I guess a clamping call or a thing to kind of hold the neck in place. Well, I had everything kind of lifted up due to the headstock angle to uh, make sure that I wouldn't snap anything off while hammering in the frets. Used a little bit of super glue in the fret slots just to kind of secure everything in place. And the fret wire I'm actually using is Sintem's, uh, I think it was like vintage. Well, it was very narrow. So it's sort of like a vintage style fret uh, with being rather small. Now, whenever doing any sort of fretting at all, make sure that you gather up all these tiny, tiny bits of fret ends and cutoffs and make sure that they don't linger behind because these will ruin your work very very quickly but overall what you see here is exactly what was left over from everything um, didn't really waste too much material doing this file down the ends of the frets to be flush with the side of the fretboard along with the inlays themselves and before moving on to leveling the frets, I need to adjust the neck ever so slightly so I don't, don't create any unnecessary dips. Fret leveling beam does the trick very quickly for this. I'm using a fret rocker just to see if there are any high spots that I need to kind of take care of. Beveling the sides of the fret with a fret file then using a fret crowning file to crown the frets. Get that Sharpie line as thin as I possibly can before moving on to the fret ends themselves. Turning over all the sharp edges, making them really nice and really smooth. This design is a string through, so I had to drill through the entire guitar on the top and then from the back make sure that I drill so that I have room to put in all my string ferrules. And after all that's done and all the final shapes are in place, I can move on to rounding the edges and starting to do all the sanding for this guitar. Essentially first just doing everything up until I think about 180 or something with the orbital sander before moving on to the next stages. Mm -hmm. 